Hello, good morning. Welcome to Mark's Garage. Here's my back axle with the drive shaft attached to it. it it's, it's on two axle stands there, little three-leggers, and I've got a third axle stand there just holding the, the uh, drive shaft. On this framework here, I've got some various bits of um, angle iron clamped on. So this swings up here, and this is able to rotate. So that's the tightest point. That is playing the pinion, but that, that is the tightest point. At this stage, all we need to know is what's the tight point and what's the loose point. So that, that is the loose point. If, I know it's not tight and loose, but you know, that's the closest and that's the furthest away. So what I want to do is, at the base of this, I want to apply weld to this side. And hopefully, initially as it gets hot, it'll go that way. And then it'll come back as it cools. So that's what I'm going to try and do. OK, so, so here's, so. This is the side that needs to be pulled. So what I'm going to do is put my finger on it, turn it 90 degrees like that, so it's on that side, and then bring it down. Oops. Bring it, bring it down. Then lay it down there. So now, the part, part that wants welding is here. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to think I'm going to just run a couple of heavy beads around there like that, just to get some weld on it. Now I can't earth this to the axle, otherwise the, it'll go through the bearings. I've got to earth it to the shaft. Old school wire brush. Right. Okay, so let's see if there's been any sort of improvement. So what I've done, I've got that ruler there, look. I've got that ruler there, look, and it, this pushes it back. You see it moving it. So that pushes it back and then stops. It stops in the furthermost backwards bit. So now that offset is about, I don't know, you know, just, just over about five sixteenths, isn't it? About eight mil. Well, it was about half an inch before. Wasn't it about 12 mil, 13 mil? So that has pulled it back. Uh, and this is the side that, well, this is the side that needs to be pulled. And that's where the welds are. So it needs to come a bit more. So I'll, I'll put another couple of beads, either side of those beads now. Okay, that's the close side then, and that's the furthest away, and that is about 
just about a quarter of an inch or six mil. I, I think these ones have come just a tiny bit. I just I only put one on. So what I think I'll do, I'll put a bit more just at this area here. I mean, it hasn't really cooled down yet. I suppose it has to cool down, doesn't it, first? Oops, pointing all over the place. Yeah, that's still warm. Let, let's let it cool down. But you can see it's a good, you know, setup, isn't it? Backyard sort of. Trying to be as accurate as you can, but with, you know, rudimentary. I hope I can clean this bearing surface up okay. I know that that's quite bad in the roads, so it doesn't seem to cause a problem. So, so we're getting better. We've gone from half an inch to quarter inch. Can you see that the system is working? Okay. So that's the kind of widest point. Bear in mind you've got this play that you this rock that you have to take into account, but you know you can sort of. That's still a lot less than the actual runner. But we've improved it quite dramatically. Yeah, I think I'll come slightly this... I'll do a loop, a U-shape run around there like that. So we're getting there, about four, four mil, five mil tops. Okay, so we can put another bead on. It's interesting. The, the reason I say that's interesting is because that's the tight side. That's the wide side, right? And it, and it isn't less than it was. But have a look now. Look, the weld's over here. This is the wide side now. In other words, that weld has actually pulled it too far. So that's the tight side there so I need to take the loose side which is this side put that to the back so that's the loose side where my fingers are I'm going to just go 90 degrees like that so that it's that side and bring it down there okay The last time I did this, I, I did that exactly the same, went too far. But it's kind of pulled it to the side, hasn't it? It might be that there's a limit to how much you can put on the one side. I've only done this once before. L like with most things, I'm either doing it for the first time or, you know, with very limited uh, experience of it.
I'll just put a relatively small amount on this side here. couple of uh, slug trials. Okay. I'm not I'm not fudging this, you know, you you're saying this as it's happening. that then that's about two mil there so I need to come just a little bit further round oh, you know it's sort of you'd have to say that well I think I'll leave it another few minutes just to cool down. But you can see it's vastly better than it was, isn't it? It's very close now. Very, very close. It's literally within about 60 thou, about a sixteenth, about one and a half mil. That's gone worse. I wonder if I just got that all wrong then. I wonder if I got that all wrong then because it, that's got made it worse. Back to about three mil now, about an eighth. Right, so this is a side that needs welding, isn't it? There. I should have, well, either left it or just double checked. When did you go off? Okay, um. I've just realised the ca oh the camera went red yeah okay the camera's about to pack up so that has got down to less than a sixteenth yeah that's uh, about one millimetre that's really good I'd say because there's there's more than that playing the bearings. So I'm going to call it good at that and on the next session I'll show you how to use that as a setup fixture for truing up that. Okay, thanks very much for joining me in the garage then. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye. Hello, look, there's my axle standing with the drive shaft upright. What I'm going to do now, now that we've got that established as running true, well, you know, true enough for me anyway, I'm going to try a method of checking the torque tube for straightness that I've used once before. <laughs> I keep saying, all these jobs, I've only done them once or twice before, but I'm going to try it. And what it involves is fitting the bearing at the top, letting it just come down, 
and seeing where it rocks. If it's touching in just one place, it will rock around that one place. So that means that that side is low and the other side is high. So you can use feeler gauges to measure the gap. And if the gap is too big, you can then apply weld to the side of the tubing to pull it. And when you feel that, when it's kind of turning but not rocking, it's okay. And like I say, I did this once before on my Roadster and it, I believe it came out okay. That's why when I was setting it up in this frame, I said, don't worry, I've got an alignment procedure that I want to go through. This is what I'm going to try and do today. I'll clean that a little bit up there, that shaft. Put the bearing on, slip the axle over and let's see what happens. It was kind of sticky around that, around that side there. You don't want it sticky, you see, because you want it to kind of, you know, pivot freely. in place I just saw it go down past the speedo opening right this is where I'm going to get very technical but hopefully not so technical that you can't understand it look I've dropped the torque tube down and can you can you see that it's rocking at that point there you see it's rocking See? In other words, this side isn't touching. That, this corner here is touching. So, I'm double checking that I've got the, got it aligned right. Right, I'm putting that bolt in the, in the one that's rocking, right? So what I want to do is, See how big a gap that is there? Well, that's a 15th out feel has just gone in there. See? That's 15 plus 3. Okay. It's, it's not as big as 18 then. It, so it's over 15 thou there. It's not 15 thou there, and it's 15 thou tight there. So, I've got to apply some weld on this side that will shrink this side and push that side down. It, it, the situation has changed. It's now rocking about this point here. So I'll put a bolt in there. It's actually hard to get it to rock now. So I think that means it's better. That's 10 thou that one. See it won't go in. We had 15 thou before and we can't get a 10 in now. That's 6 thou. Okay, the 6 thou goes there. It doesn't go here. And it doesn't go there. And it doesn't go there. 
So where does it go? Here. Six there just about goes there. It's probably worth another little bead, isn't it? The reason I'm kind of hesitating and not just launching in is because the point I was trying to make was it rocked freely before and now it's kind of rubbing rather than rocking. But I think it is pivoting around that point there. So these two points are kind of equal now. It's still this side that's high though, so this side still needs pulling up. So that rocks easier right at the moment because that side is actually hot. So this side will have expend, expanded, it'll be rocking easier on this side now. But as it cools down, it'll, it should bring this side down. That's three thou, goes in there easy. Three thou won't go in over this corner, over there. It'll kind of go in there. Gets a bit tight. Here's the sixth thou. Now this sixth thou went in before, didn't it? Well that's in. Let's make sure it's cooled down. Just goes in a bit there. Should we just not measure it and just say it's okay? It's only when you start measuring it, some measuring things that you realise <laughs> something's not right there. It's got a gap here now. So I've just cleaned that area there. I was just going to put a couple of beads there. Which is annoying because it's directly opposite where I started, so I've kind of I'm going a bit wrong somewhere. I'm going around in circles. Tight there. Six there there. Six there there. Tight here, tight here. Okay. Tight there. Again, still tight across those four. Feels better. Okay, that'll do. Too much messing about now. Tenth air won't go in at this one. Tenth air just goes in at that one, it's a tight fit. Sixth air just goes here, won't go in anywhere there. So these are all, I think these four are pretty square to be honest, and then these will just snug it down. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. That's about the best compromise I can make at the moment. Without being able to put this in a lathe and skim it, um, I can't go any further. I think there's a still a as I'm as I'm turning the shaft it changes the relationship at the bottom very slightly so even that small amount of run out that is still in the shaft even though it's like very small can upset that so I think you, sometimes you have to just say do you know I don't think I can do any better than that and you know, we'll just have to put it together and um, 
see how it goes but certainly there isn't a massive error there's a small amount of known error there's a small amount of error and hopefully that amount of error is tolerable I just don't see how using the um, methods that are available to me I can get it any better than that okay okay there you go then that's one method of trying to ensure that you've got a reasonable alignment on the torque tube it didn't go as well as I had hoped but I think you can see that it is at least now a known quantity and it's one of those things where okay let's put it together let's drive it and see how it goes it might be that it will never ever give a problem but I'll tell you when you've got 25 or 30 thou on there that you didn't know about because you haven't done it properly when you you welded it that's when you do get a problem on the spline coupling and that was why that other coupling where is it here that's why this coupling is all is all wallowed out it's all worn out because the the roadster that it was in my roadster the torque tube there was an error in the torque tube and um, there was an error in the drive shaft as well error in the drive shaft error in the torque tube and when I reworked it all I used this method and I, I managed to get it a little bit better than this and um, the, the one that's in there now has been fine so I know this works it's one of those isn't it it's not I'm not going to do it again to see if it kind of comes better because it's just too much work okay I look a bit of a scruff at the moment but thanks very much for joining me then I hope you found that interesting and you can see how it, it could work I should have just stopped when I just had six thou on that one foot shouldn't I? I should have just left it at that and said that'll be okay you know I try and carry on I make it worse don't I in the end you can never get back never get back okay thanks very much for joining me then I'll catch you on the next one bye hello um it's um bonfire night here november the 5th so you'll hear a lot of banging and noises um i've got the 59a flatty out i haven't worked on it for a while since i did the um bores i got it out because i was concerned about it and i've just wiped all the bores with oil um i fired up the valve seat cutter earlier and I've just given a rough clean up on these valve seat. That that one there is quite bad. That one there is quite bad. It's still got a. You can see I've gone really deep into it, and there's still a little bit. There's still a little bit on that side there that need, it hasn't gone. That one there isn't great either. That one's actually pretty good. That one's okay. That one's not great. That one's not too bad. And this one had to go very deep to um, clean up. And you can see I haven't even tried to tackle the actual valve bowl. Kind of thinking that's, that really needs a new seat. But I'm, I'm not familiar with how to put a new seat in so this is the other side that first one doesn't look too bad that one don't look too bad I mean <laughs> you know where 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 is the seat there that one looks all right doesn't it that one's not great again you know where's the seat I've already cleaned that one up with a different tool actually uh, not cleaned it up cleaned it up but just run a tool on it and just cleaned it up a little bit and that one 
So I'm going to run the valve cutting tool down this side here. Let's see how it looks after a go on each one. There's the tool. There's the cutting cutting tool there. Probably want sharpening to be honest. What I think I'll do, I'll um, rough them all out. I've got another tool that I want to try as well. Um, it's um, a Sogs picker van tool, but the the um, the cutters are what are marked new way. I think basically it's a repackaged new way. This is supposed to take like um, a steadying thing, but I found that when I tried it over there, it, it was throwing it off rather than steadying it. So I thought well, I'll try with that because this, with this adapter going through the two bores, it's um, pretty sturdy. looks all right actually that one that's all there is to it excuse me right back it off I'll show you that anyway that's Not look too bad. I mean, there's a little thing there, but I'll put a, a sharper angle down the middle. Yeah, I think the uh, the tool needs sharpening. You can see this one isn't too bad to be honest, but I'll just give it a little clean. We've just gone into lockdown today, a month, four week lockdown.
nice lovely old vintage tool that's the um, tool the the Buma Buma valve tool and that's the um, guide that I made it, it that piece there is from the original set and it has a 3 8 shank on it so I turn this in the lathe and reamed it three eighths just going by the uh, Ford valve guides wasn't a good enough guy you have to forgive all the mess hang on you know all the bits that's the one we just did yeah I'm gonna give them another going over because they it's not a great finish that tool needs sharpening that's the second one, that's a little bit pitted. This one here, a bit sort of pitted as well. A little bit pitted. I'll try what, see what the other tool does to them. That one's a bit pitted as well. not too bad that's got a couple of uh, little pits in the seat as well so that one needs a bit more work right I hope you found that interesting I'm sorry it didn't film like I expected and there was a lot of back background noise uh, but it's um, as I said it's bonfire night um, let's have a look at the other side the other side is quite a lot worse actually see I've had to go very deep That's not too bad. That's not brilliant. I'm gonna, there's a lot of mess inside the valve bowls. I've, I've got to clean, that one's quite nice actually. Not too bad at all, really. That one's a bit messy. That one was really messy. I had to go really deep. And you see, I still haven't cleaned up on that side there. Yeah, that one's not great either. Okay. I think that one there is crying out for a new seat and, and that one on the end there definitely. These are no worse than the Krusty Flatty though, you know, and the Krusty Flatty runs. Okay, I'll leave it at that because I'm going to go and keep the dog company because she, she doesn't seem too bothered about the, bomb, the fireworks but, um, you know, it's not fair is it? Okay, I'm going in now. I'll see, I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I've got my earplugs in. Look, I've been working on the axle. I'll show you what I've been doing. I didn't record it because it was noisy. See all that mess on the floor? All that stuff. Well, all that stuff. Ooh. That, those, that's where all the welding was on there. And I've smoothed it all off. I've smoothed all that off. And I've smoothed all the welding in that area there on the um, drive shaft. And what I've done, I've got a piece of quarter rod. Just soft stuff, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And um, I filed it very gently in the lathe the end of it and I knocked it into there I've knocked it into there then cut it off with a hacksaw both ends slightly long and just peened it with a ball peen hammer now if if that breaks um, it, it the ends of the pin come out and it creates a noise so I'm just going to hang on a minute let me get rid of this anvil bit I had that there for when I was doing the peening so I was hammering onto something solid rather than 
you know, just in mid-air. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that on there like that. And then to balance it up, I'll put another one like that. So I'll, I'll just do those now. I've also been messing around with the um, radius rods, but I haven't quite come to a conclusion on what I'm quite going to do with that yet. I had that rag on there to protect the bearing when I was grinding. I suppose it'd be interesting to see if that's still in some sort of alignment. Just turning it in mid-air, it doesn't appear to be wobbling around much. So I think that's okay. But anyway, so that's the drive shaft completed and I'm just going to give it a quick wire brush and give it a wipe over with, um, I don't know, maybe chainsaw oil, just some, some of that's oily and will cling to it, just, you know, just to protect the metal. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that all these things look a lot better now with the um, with all the welds cleaned up. These look a lot better now with the welds cleaned up. I'll, I'll drop that over actually and show it here on the on the thing. Not sure, not sure about this now. I might, I might have changed this by taking the welds off. Because it's sitting on that point there now. Okay, I'm going to have to investigate that now, because that, that's changed, which I'm not very happy about. So I, I will need to set the shaft up and recheck it, and then visit this again. I, I thought I got that sussed, but it would appear that grinding the welds off here has changed the alignment. I think what I need to do first is have a tidy up, just have a clean up, sweep up, move all this stuff so I'm not tripping over everything. Okay, I'll bring you back when I've got something a bit more positive to report. Um, rigged up this setup again. There's the ruler. Now, I'm rotating it. I can't actually detect any run out, so that, that shaft is as good as it's going to get. Okay, so the shaft's good. So I just need to revisit the uh, torque tube then. At least I haven't got to redo the shaft. I'm going to try a slightly different tactic. I've just done another weld bead. I've just done another weld bead on that side over there where it was tight. I made it a horizontal bead and I ground it off so it didn't have a load of big build up of weld.
That's had some effect. Because it's it's rock in there now. Might be all right actually. Ooh. I think I might just try a very small application on this side. Hopefully it won't get any worse. And if it's okay, I'll, I'll call it good at that. Amazing, isn't it? How you can move it. Six just goes in that gap there, but not on the point. Okay, I can just get a six in at the sort of um, five o'clock position, but not where the bolts go. Three goes in along there. Three won't go in down there. Three goes in there. Well, I'd say three thousand is good enough, wouldn't you? Six, do, well, six wouldn't go, and three, three goes. So, on the strength of that, and the fact that I haven't got any great big lumps of weld bead on it, I'm going to call that. I'm going to call a halt at that then, and uh, say that's good. I preferred that method actually, that method was better. If I do another one, I'll, I'll use that method. That was much better, much cleaner. More controllable as well, I guess. Less messy. Just uses gas though, doesn't it? What I think I'm going to do is give the drive shaft a wipe down just to protect it. But I think now that I'm happy that this is square, I'll make a gasket and get it bolted on and kind of tick it off the list and stop worrying about it. Okay, I'm going to call that good down there. Quite happy with that now. Three thou, you know, blimey, that's nothing. <laughs> well, it isn't, no, it's three thou. Um, I'm going to clean it all up and get that bolted together so that that axle unit is a unit and can go back, I can sling it back under the chassis there and then work from there the next logical step. Okay, thanks for joining me in the garage then, I'll catch you later, bye.